Hello and welcome to Irish Football Fan TV. I'm delighted to be joined by the two Barrys and Graham from Irish Sport and Memorabilia. And there's a big fair on in the back page um, pub yep. in Fibsborough this Saturday and there's a fair full of jerseys, some in which you may not have seen before. Obviously you were on this time last year, lads, and uh, you know people enjoyed seeing all the retro jerseys and stuff. But Barry, I suppose uh, you're the main man in this. Um, why should people come to uh, the fair on Saturday? Oh, sorry, I'm normally called the big man rather than the main <laughs> man, but I'll take you. <laughs> um, yeah, look, if you're into shirts, if you're into football, if you if you're into like having a bit of crack, it's the place to go. Like you get a few hundred people coming in who are into their into their jerseys. It's it's a good fun uh, occasion. Um, a lot of people like their football shirts. Uh, you see it around town when you're playing five aside or when you're. At the Ireland matches, you see the lads wearing the old shirts. When you're down at five side, you see people wearing shirts from all around the world. And uh, the, if you're into the, the old shirts and the football history, it's a pretty cool thing to have. I mean, if you're into collecting things as well, like if you're into the history of football, it's interesting as well. Obviously, this is, uh, we're 31 years after Euro 88. We've got a couple of things here, like the programme from the England-Ireland uh, game in Stuttgart. And like an Italian 90 jersey there in the corner. And... A brand new one opened, 29 years old. It's uh, Ireland uh, keeper's jersey uh, <laughs> from Italia 90. That got a huge amount of uh, yeah. interest online. The bad boy there. I think everyone's gone out buying the, the ones that are around now. I don't think they're the real ones now. Yeah, that's the interesting thing is now that you can you know when retro is cool when the lads in China are making mass producing hundreds of thousands of fake ones. Yeah. Um, so uh, you, you've seen if you have Facebook or any of those, you get the ads for the fake ones every so often. Um, it's ironic that they actually the, the fake ones they actually put the opal on the the jersey to make it look even more authentic as a replica, which is unusual because obviously Ireland were the only team to have sponsors on their uh, on their kit uh, that you could buy in the shops. And this is an unsponsored one, so it's it's a lot rarer. And as you can see, it's in pristine nick for a shirt that's nearly thirty years old. Um, a bit like John Aldridge I saw him the other day he looked in, in fairly pristine <laughs> nick for someone who's like 30 years after Italia 90 but uh, they're much like Aldo the shirts aged well you know yeah well why would why would someone collect shirts like what what, what, do you, what got you into it I suppose and Graham I don't think you were on with us last time to, to kind of explain so maybe maybe you'd want to go ahead first yeah well I think for myself it came back to it was the heady days of Stuttgart in the Euro 88 to be honest and uh, I would have been 12 at the time and I think uh, having no disposable income was uh, I couldn't afford the football shirts I think I had a, a Dunn's knockoff uh, from back in the day but I think when I was always fascinated with them and the design I come from a design background so to me a lot of the football shirts is actually the iconic design so the, the in 88 you had some of the most iconic shirts of all time the Ireland the Holland USSR so I suppose then through the years then I just got back into it with the likes of eBay and all these type of things it was easy then you could find all these shirts because back in the day it was you know you were just going into if Tesco had them or Quinsworth or this the, the soccer shop up on Georgia Street Pat you know? yeah he was so mad do you remember Pat Cheney? do you at the bottom I'm of Georgia before my time. oh no Pat Cheney was unbelievable he had a soccer shop at the bottom of uh, it's where the Oxfam Georgia Street Street is now oh I, I, Street, I actually yeah. did I used to see it I don't think yeah. I was ever it was there. unbelievable like you were able to go in there Pat would already a specialist kit so if you wanted to get like the, the UHL sport or Ool Sport or however it's pronounced they're proper like goalie leggings with the padding or if you wanted to get Ruth Hullett's lotto boots I remember I wore Ruth Hullett's lotto boots for Mount Marion's under 16s back in back in the day I thought I was Ruth Hullett I wasn't but uh, I big hair that was about as close as it came but uh, it was uh, it was brilliant it was a fantastic shop it was really kind of the original collector shop mm. because he he went out all around the world and he would get if you wanted something he would use his contacts around the world to order stuff in which as a kid was amazing you know before the internet like it was very hard to get you know the the, the second hand stuff like it might have been car boots or your, someone was going to on holiday to Spain and go get me a Barca shirt you know yeah. so again you saw Gary Lineker and Maradona oh I want that Barca you know but now there with the internet it just it can open the whole world to collecting and that's where, why, why it's really taken off now you know I think it's funny you talk about the fake shirts that are on sale and one of the beauties of the fairs and one of the reasons the collectors really love it is because a lot of them buy stuff online but when you buy stuff online you don't know like are, is what you're seeing what you're going to get yeah you don't know what the size is going to be like. You have to pay for the post. You have to wait for it. The beauty of the fairs is you just walk in. 
we have a little change in area you can try it on you can see how it looks if it doesn't fit it doesn't fit and you you walk out with the shirt on your back yeah and like the opportunity to do that is it's so rare like we only do these a couple of times a year so it's a it's a brilliant way if you're rather than having to do the, and you actually get the crack of talking as well yeah and um, yeah. which you don't get online you're pushing you're clicking and you, you're waiting in the post for a tour yeah i think the, i think the most annoying thing is the fact is you don't know whether it fits you or not the fact you can actually exactly. try it on yeah it's quite similar to the, the new show they have on bt sport now that what i wore yeah the jerseys and stuff the way they had the players coming in Ooh. and they had looked through retro tops that they may have worn or, or kids they had we, were grown. S- we were saying we should get some uh, league of ireland former league of ireland players <laughs> to come down to the market just to stick on some of the old uh, the old kits yeah, they probably were they'll probably be watching this now and, and, and they might get onto it who would be who would be who can we get down to stick this on we'll fly in Derry McKeeley from uh, <laughs> yeah, Lanzarote exactly. in his pub <laughs> <laughs> he'd probably want them up on the walls in Lanzarote I'd say yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, he, might, he might end up getting it um, mm-hmm. but, 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 so I suppose kind of t- talk us through what would be the, what would be on sale on the day Oh, it's a it's a big mix. Well, like you have it, some there, you have some under the table. Yeah, there. but just just to give you some context. So generally speaking, with football shirts, you've got three different kinds, right? So you've got your standard replicas, which are the ones you buy in the shops, and really old replicas, like say that United one, would be very desirable. They were they, they call it the snowflake, snowflake one. So it's got called a snowflake because people are particularly offended by things <laughs> are soft. It's because it kind of looks like it has snowflakes on it. Um, but that shirt uh, was a very very popular one. And uh, unusually, because it has it, the replicas made of felt, typically they fell apart after a few washes. So getting was them that, that the one that they were blaming on that win the league? Was no, that was the grey oh, one. The gray that one. was the invisible one. So, yeah, so uh, we actually have it on the. You can't see it on the table now. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's a magic table. The, yeah. No, the magic shirt. Yeah, but uh, no, um, that was very popular. So that's your kind of standard one as a replica you buy in the shops. Yeah. Up then from that, you've got like sign shirts. So if you wanted to get a Christmas gift for someone or you wanted something for your wall um, or your, your, if you've got like a, a games room or a pub room or a, a man the shed, man cave. you know, the man cave, exactly. Yeah. Um, th- something like that, you might get something signed. Example, there you got a wooden shirt there signed by Duff, a replica uh, Bullham shirt signed by Duff. You've think, got the... We've got a few match warns then. Is the next phase up then is the match warns and match issues. These are the shirts that are made for the players. They're different to the ones you buy in the shops. They tend to be made in a different country the quality of the, the gear is very much better made um, and so they're unusual just on top of your head there I know you showed in your show there recently the um, Duffy shirt from the, the Georgia game uh, that one up there is one of Only Seamus, the real fans get them that's it <laughs> well that there is uh, Seamus Coleman's issued shirt from the Northern Ireland game uh, in Lansdowne um, when uh, Randolph had a stormer really um, no no yeah but uh, <laughs> I don't know how it finished no, but he, yeah. was, he, he was amazing that day as he has been obviously in so many games and uh he'll be a little now when he sees this oh yeah well oh, sorry yeah. <laughs> to be fair now like he's like he's always been a brilliant player brilliant basketballer brilliant uh, footballer but uh he's i'm delighted he's kind of come into his own because he wasn't getting a fair crack at the club yeah. level and it took that breakthrough at ireland level it's rare enough to happen and um, this one here is an unusual one this has got a lot of interest when we put up a post duration of it this is, i don't know what your cyrillic is like but this is a csk or a spartak moscow jersey that was worn by aiden mcgeady so that's uh, the Russian language, kind of Bulgaria, Eastern Europe. That's E, backwards N is like E, and that D is like a delta, which is a D. So you've got like Mac G D. That's how they spell it there. Okay, yeah. For the Champions League games, they're spelled in English, but for it's the Russian. It's beautiful about the long sleeve, isn't it? Ah, yeah, it's fantastic. Yeah, it's... Well, he used to alternate between the, the what you call that? Under Armour. Under Armour, Lycra mm. kit, yeah. with short sleeves and the long sleeves. If you're playing in Russia, you could be playing in Siberian weather. So it's pretty rough, but that's a really, really cool shirt. Um, very unusual and again not something you could just walk into Arnott's and buy do you know what I mean like that's or yeah. even go online and buy picking up an actual match worn Spartak Moscow Magidi shirt is not easy so that would be the kind of higher end of things but again the replica side Barry you this is obviously one of one yeah, of your own yeah we'll have we'll have a, a good few um, that, vintage uh, Ireland jerseys the 92 home and away they're classics as well you don't actually see those ones very often as well which is pretty cool so we'll have those uh, the whole range of Republic of Ireland stuff from the 90s, the noughties. This is my personal favourite. The 80s, noughties, and now. <laughs> this exactly. will be on the shelf as well. If, if it's kind of a, another, did you say Marmite shirts? Another Marmite shirt, either love so it or Eddie, you. Eddie, uh, Eddie was saying that that's his that's favourite, favourite shirt. Oh, this is my yeah. favourite as well. Yeah. And I, I, I don't know, people hate it, but I t- at the time it was just. It's not my cup of tea now, but <laughs> the, the mad thing about a shirt that's so rare is there's actually two different versions of it as well. So like, there's a version that has the tricolour in the shape of the, the actual Irish flag. 
and there's this version which has the other way around. Yeah. Never got to the bottom of why there were two different versions, Random. but that's actually the I think it's one. in his book. In the Does he cover it all? Does uh, he? Okay. Yeah. Forty Shades of Green. I think I have a look. It's a great book. In fairness, now yeah. and actually, to be fair, we won't have it on sale on the day. But if you're looking for a regal Christmas present, you're into for sure mm. it's an Irish football. Eddie's book is, is I really actually good. Have it here. He has it here. Come on, Paul. <laughs> so there it is. There it is. Fantastic book. Um, really, really good book uh, that Eddie did, and uh, superb collection, okay, obviously. Too. Yeah, well, um, I'm trying to see if is my, does mine match to the one on the <laughs> on the front or is mine the opposite? It's the same. Yeah. So you're saying like that the there's two versions with the color swapped around, is it? It just in the the order of the three different colors wow, there. Okay. So yeah. yours is actually different there. If you have a look, so you learn something. You learn, you learn something. something here. Every day. Well, you don't get that when you go online and click buy it now yeah, on eBay. Know. You know, it's a Christmas <laughs> present for someone at home. That's yeah. it. You can order those online. I think. Well, from Eddie, the well-known the uh, UK uh, check out Ireland Ireland soccer, Ireland soccer, <laughs> company, yeah. Ireland soccer <laughs> shirts on Twitter and get on to Eddie about the yeah, book. Yeah, it's a great book. But if you want to get the actual shirts to wear, obviously you can't uh, get that from the book. So. This is kind of your opportunity. It's funny, actually, that uh, Ireland away shirt was a standard away shirt, but we only wore it in the one senior international at Windsor Park um, when Alan McLaughlin scored that brilliant goal. Say um, it again. <laughs> yeah, when Alan scored that. And that's that. what I think a lot of the things with the, the, the classic shirts is people associate them with very much a, a game that they were at or, you know, a time yeah. in I was actually going to yeah. say that because when Barry started talking about that, then mm. he started going and walked about Randolph there. So, yeah, you're, yeah. you're right in what you're saying there. So that's why people are like, looking, oh, do we get so many requests. Have you got the Euro 88 or the Italian 90? Or, like, even for League of Ireland fans, have you got the, the 2002 yeah. Bows when they won the league? There, yeah. You know, Stephen yeah. Kenny-tastic, you know, so... Uh, recently gone back to, to, Des, to Des, Des Kelly. Kelly. So we'll have a few Des Kelly uh, old-school classics on the day. And you'll be in Fibsburg. Yeah, we have a lot of bows for this one, uh, so uh, any bows fans get down early because there's, there's a great range of stuff the, this fair. We always have loads of League of Ireland, so uh, again, a lot of them are looking for the older, like there was a lot of hoo-ha on Twitter this week about the new club uh, kit launches for Rovers and Dundalk and Cork, yeah. so people are, are mad into getting the older ones because they're just... People are going, oh, I don't like the new ones, you know. Yeah. So they, 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 they're, you know, the harp one is the one that everyone wants, you know, that people just can't get. Sure, they them. even made a retro one of it recently. And right. That was out, that was actually based on my. Uh, it was a match worn shirt that I'd lent to Dundalk Museum, and it was on display there. And CX Sports basically just copied and made a version of it. So uh, yeah, that sold out. There was huge controversy over that because they only could make X amount of them yeah. because I think there might have been licensing over the use of the Harp logo and then nobody could get them and it was people buying them up and all sorts of sounds like the Bob like Marley yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah exactly yeah, the same thing yeah. so it's gas so uh, th- you can see why, why, why it's a, an interesting thing I mean and it's funny because like that particularly having gone to matches and their memories of stuff a lot of the time the memory you might have is from when you were a 9 or a 10 year old like you mentioned having the, the Dunn store shirt it might have been for me I had a champion cheese shirt champion cheese shirt I don't very few people actually were lucky enough to have the proper Adidas one yeah. if you were kind of really fancy you might have the O'Neill's one yeah exactly. um, and then if you were really really fancy you'd have the Adidas one or a really good man like who'd buy it for you but uh, other than that like you were going with something like that but if you had a shirt you liked invariably you get older you get bigger you get bigger this way my kid can pick it that way <laughs> so I it's you can't the shirts these days are very tight so I think they some are. people even when they're sitting down they might not be that big and they're kind of like yeah. by the way camera adds, adds 10 pounds oh, yeah. Yeah, so how like, many cameras yeah. have you got on <laughs> 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 no but seriously to be fair like it's a lot of the time people who have grown out of their shirts or they've worn yeah. them to death and they'd love to have it again so something again like this is a fair is another way where you can get the particular shirt you liked but you, you can't wear it anymore because you know, it was chucked or destroyed. Or well, whatever. we had somebody who was wearing his dad's kit from twenty years ago, and then he was getting a replacement for his dad, who'd like obviously gotten a bit bigger as time yeah. went on. But that was kind of cool. So you have these little stories as people are coming in as well. Well, I think that's the, I think that's the beauty of it too. Is kind of like if you if you are looking like I know there's so many people looking for this jersey in particular that you know that one's not for sale. I think so, yeah. yeah. That'll be I, there I, on the day. I, I, It'll be there on the day. We can't. We won't sell. A lot of people do contact us and ask us. Will we sell <laughs> stuff they see in the pictures online? And we're like, no. This yeah, is not. The, we we could do that if we wanted to, but that's not what this is about. Yeah. This is about actually a, like a social thing. Yeah. People come in, they enjoy it. They have the crack. They may buy nothing. Yeah. You know, but they may just want to learn about shirts, and they may say to us, like, if you ever see this, will you let us know? Like it's 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 more than just 
there's plenty out there if you want to click and buy it now. No, but what I'm saying is that I know that for a fact there'd be a lot of people looking to buy that one, mm. and I, I don't know if you have the white one version of that one, but there, there is a lot of people looking for it, and they might be just looking to buy that as a Christmas present, say, mm. because they don't want the the fake ones that are going around at the minute, you know, and you exactly, can tell the yeah. difference in the opal yeah, yeah, straight yeah, away. Yeah. You want to be a blind man, not to really, yeah, like, in yeah. my opinion. You don't, yeah. you don't really know where your money is going as well with the fake stuff. Like the, you're probably better uh, buying the yeah or what happens when it's washed type thing. <laughs> yeah, exactly. you, there's yeah. no guarantees I bought a Zidane one from the 98 World Cup and it fell, fell to bits in the yeah. wash so just be careful I suppose <laughs> and I would say that's those, the danger some of the older shirts yeah. actually will also fall apart in the wash as well so you have to be careful what's that you wash that <laughs> yeah that's it no returns <laughs> what's that jersey there Liverpool this Liverpool one yeah that's an interesting one this was a uh, it was kind of half popular, half despised at the time, it's like but it's it's problem. notorious. The best shirts are either loved or hated. Yeah. Because if it's not loved or hated, it's just boring, you know. And this was definitely different for mm. the time. I'm trying to think of matches. There's like I'm an Everton fan personally, so like I wouldn't have uh, too much, uh, you know, direct interest in a Liverpool shirt myself. But I would know, obviously, in football, we would have seen some great games. I remember, did they play? I'm trying to think, did they play a game maybe against Southampton? God. Uh, when there was a big, uh, there was a some uh, someone got a hat trick. Was it the CCA maybe got a hat trick or somebody like that? And or maybe I can't remember. But certainly the Liverpool fans would see that and immediately associate it with certain players: McManaman, uh, Fowler, Neil Ruddock. Um, I thought it was a goalie shirt, but obviously I didn't it, it has, I, yeah. we have the goalie one from. Oh, sorry. Yeah. So this again, a lot of us Barry saying they associated with certain, but also a lot of collectors or I suppose fashionistas are into this era shirt because of the design of them so the goalie shirts from the 90s uh you get people we, i've sold loads of people who have no interest in football whatsoever uh especially type thing. yeah exactly and especially i think because of the neck line that they used in that particular uh, era so again that's the the wonderful uh yeah it's fairly really trippy what's now. interesting trippy, about yeah. this though do you see it do you see the uh <laughs> do you see the design on this with the the the, the kind of claw marks yeah, that's a subliminal kind of nod to the Predator boots, which they launched at the same time. It's, it's actually a Predator template, I think, was the official. Yeah, that was the official title for it. There you go. Behind closed doors, and that was effectively it's the idea is trying to tie in with all the marketing of the Predator, which was also a Liverpool thing, I guess. Craig was, Johnson designed. I like this. He's just pulling all. Uh, yeah. um, <laughs> this was uh, also the famous shirt as per Paki. But that was actually called the Predator Template as well. So the likes of Ravenelli, the Bulgarian keeper, they all wore. So that the yeah. template was used by a huge amount. And you can see like that that there that template there was for the sides of it, which had the claw marks. This is actually supposed to be the little rubber bits yeah. that were down the middle and the sides. So it's kind of again just subtle nod to the the advertising of the new boots that they were trying to make the money off. And then MIA, the musician, wore I don't know one or two years ago in a photo shoot so it, it kind of went viral for that reason then P people who aren't interested in football are like looking for the shirt because of yeah the, I, I, the connection. Know, I noticed that like Urban Outfitters and something like that are starting to sell kind of jerseys that have the kind of mad designs from back yeah. then and do you see i seen one of Mata wearing in a photo shoot recently about well, a couple of years ago in yeah. the retro one and then the Ar Arsenal, one. Arsenal yeah. did a series of a couple of programs over a few uh, matches where they had current players wearing older kit it was very cool. Wilshire did a couple of them, and uh, similarly, United Mata had like the sharp electronics. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, United top, and it was very, very cool. And it's nice to see the players. I think, generally speaking, players when it comes to shirts also are of two mentalities. There's those who really love the shirts and know their collections, and we would know obviously through collecting because we're all collectors. That's how we got all of these. As from being kids the whole way up, we were collecting, and you, your collections change over time. But you collect, you collect. Invariably, then you get married, you have kids. You can't keep collecting. You gotta offload some stuff, and that's kind of how we got into this, you know. Um, but we still do collect on a little bit, yeah, you know, yeah, as well. Yeah. Exactly. So uh, that's it. And ultimately, um, yeah, you, you kind of you you get more of what stuff you already have, and then you're happy to level of stuff go. You get a slightly better version of something you already had, or you don't want something anymore, and you just it's a basically offload it. So it's, it's a bit. That's kind of what drives it, you know. And it's uh, and it's great. It's a really, really kind of good hobby, and. You get people from all over the world who are into it as well. It's not a particularly Irish thing, it's English thing, Spanish thing, South American thing. The Brazilians love it. The Brazilians love their football. There'll probably be a lot of them down there on the day. Yeah, there's always a good few. There's a few French lads, Brazil lads, few, few. a lot of the ladies also collect the shirts as well. Um, and obviously a lot of them play as well. We've got a few, uh, few few footballers as well, both men and women will come in because they want to get them five side as well. And we would have sometimes some of the girls' shirts as well, which are harder to get in 
the right fit um for the ladies as well which is which is great for them because they can't just they'd have to order them online otherwise you've got that same issue with sizes and stuff like yeah. that so so what what is what are the details i suppose to kind of wrap it up uh what what's the details for saturday yeah where, so where do people go what time does if, it you, start? if you've, you've never been to the back page pub it's um it's it's basically on the road up towards Fibsra, coming from four courts direction um it's just after mcgowan's basically if you know mcgowan's pub um and uh, that would have been one of the haunts when I was younger. I don't know if the young kids there go. Oh, they right still go. They still go. Today, they, right? they have a singles night on a Tuesday, I believe. <laughs> right. I so believe you're early, uh, <laughs> it's always popping up on my news. I don't know if they're trying to tell me something. Like. <laughs> Fair enough. Well, um, it's just up from there. It's it's a big sports team pub. We've been doing it there every few months for the last couple of years. They're great. They're great hosts, and they really enjoy it as well. They get behind it, and uh, they make amazing pizza. Like if you if you like your pizza, they make some fantastic pizza in there. They've got some Brazilian chefs. They make fantastic pizza. So a lot of people come up. They'll have a look at the shirts. They'll sit down. They'll have a few beers. They'll have a few soft drinks. They'll have a tea or coffee, and they'll get a pizza or something to eat and uh, head off. So it, we start at eleven. What we'd say is, if you want, if you see anything up here that looks good, the chances are there's a lot of other people who also want the same thing because people have similar tastes. And um, so if you really want to get something, get up early don't leave it late because if you come late it will be gone that's the way these things tend to work so it'll open the doors of the place will open at around 10 but the um the actual fair itself won't open until 11. so nothing will be sold till 11 basically nothing will be sold to 11. P- feel free to contact us if you want details anything don't ask to buy anything off us before the fair it's not fair on the people who make the effort to come out to queue up and um, it's just not fair to just sell stuff if you want to buy something online just go and buy it this is about getting in there having the crack and and seeing what you can do and we're there till half two uh, three in uh you know kid friendly as well now it is a pub be mindful of that but we've had a lot of families come in through the years um we so just ha- sorry to cut you off did we just have kids gears up yeah yeah, yeah, there's, sure, always, yeah. A, there's always a couple of things, yeah. So it's uh, there's something for everyone, basically, is what okay, we would always yeah. say. Sorry, Graham, I didn't mean to cut so you yeah, off. No, yeah, no, so... Um, checking, that's all. We close very much at half two, so if you come at 25 past two, we'll be probably taking stuff down because yeah, the pub is a busy pub, it's a busy time of year. So if you want to come in, there's a lot of stuff there, so get in early if you want to have a proper route around, you know, because you never know what you'll find. Yeah. We don't even know half the time sometimes. No. I know well, the, the, <laughs> yeah. the last the last hour is us uh, going around to each other's rails checking what what yeah. we haven't seen before. Yeah. So it's yeah it's it's good crack. And are you gonna get down yourself? Do you think? Yeah, I I reckon so. I have Saturday off, so cool man. Uh, I'll drop down. But I, uh, for anyone who I suppose didn't know, because I didn't know so recently, the Lewis actually goes to Fibsbury. Um, the from, the the nearest stop is actually Broadstone. So if you get off a Broadstone, you is can it not walk called Fibsbury? No, there is a Fisbury stop, but the nearest stop to the back, back page. page is Broadstone. You get out Broadstone, you walk up the hill, oh, it's okay. right there. So is that past? No, before Fisbury coming from town. Right, okay. So it's walking distance from town as well, yeah. in fairness, but... I'd yeah. know I'd know from, from getting off a daily mountain walking around the corner, so you're yeah. probably yeah. right, yeah. yeah. Um, but I'm just saying to anyone who, I suppose, thinks, oh, no, to get out all that way, it's not actually that bad on the Lewis. It's, uh, it's, it's the Lewis Green through. Line as well. That'll yeah, yeah, go the whole way through town, through O'Connell Street, the whole lot. Um, and it's it, you'd probably get there in, in less than half an hour, and uh, if not the sixteen, I know it goes from kind of volunteers way as well, um, through town. You're, if he's not, if he's coming from that sort, if he's a coming from elsewhere, I'm not too sure. But um, nine bus as well goes through Harold's Cross, uh, Kimmage that way. That goes right outside, drops you right outside. Yeah. Venue. So there's, you know, it's well served and it's it's a great pub. You know, it's the body tonic lab, so you know it's properly properly run. So well recommend. And great pizza. Yeah. Exactly pizza yeah i do end up uh eating some pizza on the day invariably so <laughs> well deserved <laughs> it's christmas as they say and paul what's your what's your favorite shirt if you could pick out any shirt what would be the one you'd want to get this one in white that one in white oh, is yeah. it oh, yeah. oh, yeah. sponsor or no sponsor uh no sponsor okay. no sponsor I, I don't like the sponsor everyone yeah. complains but look at the air con there the, <laughs> I know, the so, opal yeah Oh, you've got opals. Well, I do. So. I, 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 of all of them, the kind of opal, it's just the most I suppose it, so it's But I think it fits that. Yeah. The aircon doesn't fit that. Um, and the three, forget about it. Yeah. But that, I think, it doesn't look too bad with the, with the real opal. But um, the fake one is just kind of annoys me, you know. So I like it like that. Yeah, yeah beautiful. Cool. That would be, that would be look, me. Thanks very much for having us. We had a great crack the last time. We, we look, any questions you have, even if you're not coming in the fair, if you have any questions about shirts between the three of us, like, 
we'll always be able to help you out. But as well as that, uh, the lads have a group on Facebook called Irish Sports and Memorabilia, which you can join as well. So if you have questions or just people usually selling shirts and stuff in that as, as well, or, or even just posting up stuff that they got. Yeah, um, yeah. actually, that, that's great. We would love to see what people get, even at previous fairs or the next one. Just let us know because it'd be cool to share those pictures with other people as well. Yeah, well, I suppose thanks for coming in and thanks for Cheers. bringing the shirts. It was a bit uh, last minute, but uh, <laughs> it is what it is. Thanks very much. I'm sure we'll get down on Saturday and uh, let us know your thoughts in the comments and, and leave comments and feedback um, in the comments to the, about the jerseys, which one you liked, or are you going to get down and see the lads on Saturday? Yeah. Um, don't forget to subscribe. And, and do, yeah, subscribe to the page. Always subscribe, that's the thing. And don't forget, if you do want something in particular, right, don't leave it to the last minute to ask us because you never know, we might have it and not have it packed. So if people are looking for something particular, let us know and we'll see what we see. What yeah, we do. don't just come in and assume it's gone. Yeah. All right. Nice. I suppose we'll wrap it up there. Thanks very much for watching. Thanks, Paul. And we'll speak to you all soon. See you Saturday.